Hello and welcome to Silverleaf Tarot. You are awakening this solar eclipse and to find out in what ways you are awakening, you choose one of these piles. Pile number one, Rot and Decay. And that is with horse. Pile number two, rewild. And that is with human heart. And pile number three. Sun Salutation. And that is with Snake. So take as much time as you need to. Pause the video if you want. And um, then you head down to the description box where you'll find timestamps and chapters that will take you directly to your reading. And I look forward to seeing you there. Welcome, pile number one. Now, all of these cards alerted themselves to me from, from my other table. You know, I had prepped, you know, a selection of oracle cards uh, prior to the whole reading. So it's so uh, cute and funny when um, the cards from the other table are like, hey, what about me? <laughs> these two are here. We may keep them on the table. We may not. I forgot to say... In the introduction that um, I've been enjoying uh, casting a rune to get the energy of a reading and obviously you know this is a solar eclipse like this is big it's a game changer it can be highly unexpected it can be like course correcting you know it's a wild card the eclipses are wild cards and it was so interesting because I was genuinely getting the energy of awakening and then um, this was the rune that came up and this is Airwaz which is magic, rebirth and spiritual awakening and then when I was um, shuffling the goddesses and gods deck, Kali Ma <laughs> spiritual transformation threw out, um, threw itself out, flew out, <laughs> threw out such an interesting Freudian slip there because suddenly I recognized the skull skulls and obviously with rot and decay and the skull here this is a unicorn skull this is it that it, it's time to let something go and I was um and Kali Mara is going to stay on the table here because of this link with these skulls the skies this is about uh, letting something go um, in order to walk through a portal with uh, direction, with clarity of intent uh, towards the new. And this is towards the brand new here. And then that Freudian slip threw out. It's time to throw something out um, that just isn't working anymore. It's just time to let it go um, and for you to move on. This is the energy of your reading, very powerful. Also, like just that that word cute came in to begin with. We're getting all this disparate energy, the kind of cute energy of these cards wanting to come in. And then Kalima, you know, very, very potent, powerful um, deity. Like, um, you know, this is an intense transformation deeply, deeply letting something or someone go so that you can move forwards. Here, the horse wants to move forwards, wants to have direction, getting Sagittarius energy here, wants to be clear about their intent 
So that, and maybe so what is uh, being let go could be indecision, you know, clouded viewpoint. We've got these uh, roses over the eyes. Perhaps that is what needs to be let go. And you may have been stuck in a certain state of holding on to past um, ways of thinking, ways of being, ways of living, you know, on the physical, um, you know, spiritually, emotionally. You may be willing and wanting, desiring to let the past, those past patterns go for good so that you can move freshly into the new with this potent wild card solar eclipse energy. So we're going to cast the runes on our houses because we'd like to find out, please, Carly, we'd like to find out what does pile number one need to let go. This is actually, oh, okay. So we have two already. The M, it's, this uh, rune has been coming out so much, <laughs> so often. And it's interesting because in this deck of cards, um, this rune, which is Ewas, so interesting, Ewas and Ewas here, has a horse on it. So we've got horse, horse, here we are. <laughs> so, we, But I also see with the M, I, I get movement, clarity, I get the chariot card, which was interesting because in the like prep prep of this reading, the chariot card did pop up. You want to move forward. This is what is awakening in you. And what is awakening is this clarity of directions. Oh, amazing. <laughs> we didn't even get anything on here. So maybe we move that. Or maybe we just see. Oh, okay, we're moving it. Look. <laughs> Spiritual awakening. Like there's a deep potent, powerful uh, transformation afoot. Orange Dragon brings soul families and communities together. Spread belonging, warmth and oneness. Bring people everywhere together. You may be in a situation where you just feel like that situation, that community, that neighborhood, that workplace just isn't aligned anymore. It was beautiful, like it was It was a good um, thing, but there's this yearning in your spiritual vibration to cut yourself free and to move forward. Look at this, like our dragon here almost has um, sort of ropes on them here. Belonging, warmth, and oneness bring people everywhere together. You actually, you're wanting to move on from something uh, currently in your life. Mm. Those cards, like my fingers accidentally touched them in the intro. Wow. You're ready and willing to move on from something that was precious to you. But you, your soul yearns for the new. The wolf and the fire ant. I don't really know much about the fire ant. That's interesting. That wants to remain hidden for a time. Let's look up the fire ant. So it took me ages to find <laughs> this page. And yes, and while I was doing that, the, the message came through that your current circumstances, while they may have been beautiful, while they may have been nourishing in their own ways, it's like it's become toxic to you. Maybe you're experiencing some kind of even physical inflammation or physical areas of, you know, pain or tenderness or inflammation um, in a certain point, and it's your body revealing how your soul is feeling about a particular situation. You may get like, um, if this is like a way of eating, for example, that you're being called to leave, like you may be getting hella indigestion, you know, heartburn kind of energy or 
like really sore stomach or something like that that like before it wasn't like that but it's like that now because it's a um, sign it's a symbol from your soul from your spiritual self that this situation is is actually toxic for you now now again a certain situation doesn't necessarily need to be a horrible thing for it to be toxic to you at a particular point in time. It's just that it's time to let it go. So also with the fire ant, we do get the energy of a community. So this could be your, your workplace. This could be your, your career. So it's the kind of work that you've done up until now. And it's, it's just um, actually causing kind of physical problems now very interesting and then your soul is yearning to what I got was go out on a limb go your own way find your new tribe find your new workplace find your new community this could even you know this could be so many things it's how it's resonating with you like you could have a certain algorithm on your social media feed and it's just it's not feeling good, you know, it's feeling, it's um, making you feel, you know, whatever, it's just not feeling good. And so then this is the sign to actively change your algorithm by looking up other things, start um, exploring with that Sagittarius energy. They are the adventurer, they're on a quest, they are sure of their direction, but the direction could be freedom from you know, once we sort of notice and acknowledge, and I think that's a really important thing. We may be aware of something, but once we truly acknowledge, oh wow, this way of eating, or this place that I'm living, or where I'm working, actually doesn't feel good to me anymore. Once we acknowledge that in that really deep way, that is the moment where this spiritual transformation energy comes in because it helps you to cut away from this rotten decay that has been occurring for some time with the white hair here. Seeing as I did look this up, we'll have a look at the keywords. Aggression, rigid thinking, following orders, fire ant. So this is um, could definitely come into maybe this is like the country in which you live maybe you know the government has changed and it has brought in you know restrictive policies something that just doesn't align with you spiritually and this could definitely be a workplace you know you're you're tired of you know working for the man so to speak following orders um yeah, it's just not working for you anymore. Maybe you're wanting to start your own business, become self-employed here. You you want to be um, the alpha of in your own life. You know, you want to go your own way. Let's see what this is. Spider. Interesting. It's like this change is being woven for you. And the energy with spider woman goddess coming in is that the moment that you truly acknowledge that this has to end, you know, you're getting physical symptoms of the not rightness of this situation. The moment that you deeply acknowledge that it's time to let this go, that's when the spider woman energy comes into play. And this is the wild card because look, there's all these beautiful hibiscus, passionate potentialities on the other side of cutting yourself free from this situation that no longer works for you. Let's get some more information with the tarot. I know that these cards are here and that they wanted to come through, potentially that one. Let's see. Let's get a few tarot cards. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, oh, the, oh my gosh, and death and rebirth is on the back. This is incredible. The lovers, and that's this passionate energy here with this hibiscus, this fiery energy. Um, Carly Ma wants to fire you up. Like, and not in this um, inflammation kind of indigestion kind of way, but in this passionate creator way. 
Uh, she wants to help you to cut yourself free from whatever this is. And again, it could be a way of thinking, it could be belief systems, a way of talking to yourself, a way of seeing the world even, something like this. But quite possibly with community. It's the, the who or the what that you are with at this time. I mean, and look at this cheeky tongue poking out. It's like there's something, there's a beautiful way forward for you from this uh, toxic situation. The lover's passionate connection. It's also a choice. Um, the lover's is a card of choice. And then we have the ace of swords here. This is choosing a new direction. Look at this crow flying free. And this is about creating the world of your dreams around you and going uh, searching for it. This is the energy. Once you're willing to cut free from this toxic situation, sorry, I'll show you that, death and rebirth. And this is this energy. Once that sky, um, you know, cuts through what you need to let go of, then like the world is your oyster kind of energy. It's like suddenly there's so much potential and also so much passion in your life. This is, you know, Sagittarius is a very passionate energy. This is on a quest for the new, to go your own way, to break free from the chains kind of energy um, of what has been because it's no longer working for you, it's no longer lighting you up. But this is what is coming, and this is what is on the other side of making this choice with the Ace of Swords here. <sighs> Nettle action. The snake. The snake is in pile number three, so you maybe feel called to that, but the snake is a symbol of transform transformative action here. Transformative action. We have Mars, and what's our other planet here? Pluto, death and rebirth. I mean, it just keeps saying the same thing. Oh, wow. Heading towards wealth, Tulsi and wealth here. Also, the peacock is very um, proud, very willing to stand out from the crowd, to go their own way. And there's this energy here. No longer following the crowd in terms of what has been. This is a massive breakthrough energy, pile number one. This is you going out on a limb, going out on your own and being willing to do what gives you pleasure. This is all about pleasure here and the abundance that is going to be magnetically attracted to you through that passion, through that energy, through that like palpable, um, almost sexual energy. It's like this is Kundalini energy here. Um, yeah, this is this is what is awakening in you. The desire to cut away from the old from what no longer works for you, and open yourself up. You know, this is courage here, to take the action to cut away from what is no longer working for you. And that creates this magnificent, like, portal of potential where you are the creator, you are the empress, you're magnetizing, this is law of attraction, you're envisioning a, a new life for yourself and you're creating it, you're magnetizing it to you and it's through this very quite passionate um, kundalini infused energy here. This is following your passions, being willing to stand out from the crowd and also being willing to be a leader. Perhaps you're feeling called yeah, to create your own um, business or your own community of some kind. And it's being willing to be the one that steps out from the crowd and leads the way. So we're going to, oh, we're going, oh, thank you. <laughs> one was left on the table. Pets, you love and understand animals. Very much um, community energy here. And again, this pathway, it's almost like you talking to your higher self or a particular spirit guide here. 
a very beautiful spirit guide is with you right now, communicating with you and saying, basically, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's get out of here. There's this pure positive energy here with this unicorn. It's time to move on. This is, you know, wishing well here. Make a wish and expect the very best is one of the cards in here. Brothers and sisters, to get along with others, see the love and the best within them. Interesting. Mm. Again, movement. And perhaps this is where you are now. Perhaps there's some uh, tumultuous energy in your workplace, in your current community, or in, yeah, could be like in your social media feed, and it's like churning and bubbling, and you're, you're being called to move away from that with love, with compassion. This is the energy here. This isn't a, um, you know, energy of like labeling the past as toxic. It's just, it's not right for you anymore. And this is the energy of moving on with love and compassion for where you have been. But it's time to create this beautiful energy here. It's time to envision a new future for yourself and take action to transform your life through cutting away from what isn't working for you anymore. This is what is awakening for you. Pile number one at the potent time of the solar eclipse portal. Thank you for being here with me for this message. And if this message has resonated with you, please like and subscribe. We would love to have you here for another reading. Oh, welcome pile number two. <laughs> The, your reading sort of started before I um, before I pressed record. Interesting that the tea leaves want to be like this for you, <laughs> feeling these two. Um, before we begin, first of all, welcome. <laughs> and uh, you are awakening at this time. And the purpose of this reading is to find out how and what in which ways are you awakening at this powerful um, solar eclipse portal. And what brought me to the theme of this reading was, was these two. I've taken to um, casting a rune to get the energy of a reading. And it's funny because I was already getting awakening energy. And then Airwaz came out this one, which is Magic Rebirth Spiritual Awakening. And then as I was shuffling one of the Oracle decks, Kali Ma Spiritual Transformation uh, flew out of the deck. So we're going to, here we go. We may uh, shuffle, um, cast this rune as well. But I just wanted to share with you the, the energy of this reading is very powerful. Like it's a very powerful awakening, transformative energy. And your guidance, uh, plain as day from your card and your symbol, is that you want to free yourself. <laughs> like you want to feel like the wind in your hair. You want to feel free. You want to take that chance. You want to roll the dice. You want to be free. I can just feel that energy so beautifully through me. And this is what is awakening in you. One, the desire, but two, I feel like the opportunity. The opportunity to plant something new. Ingmar's wanted to come out. Um, creation, energy, wholeness. So Ingmar's is an opportunity for you to plant something and for you to grow it. Um, two, two, two on the timer. Trust that you are in the right place at the right time to take this great leap I'm getting. Interesting. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what this great leap is. This, I mean, this is following your heart, clearly. Angels are guiding you. For some reason, as soon as I flipped that over, I felt this link between Kali Ma, which, who is a deity, a goddess, very powerful. 
Uh, she's the divine feminine and the dark feminine. She is destruction and creation. Very powerful, powerful energy. Spiritual guidance, protection from harm. You have, ve well, that was the energy coming into your read. It was so palpable. You have very, very powerful guides at this time. Pile number two. Ooh, um, this card was on the bottom of the deck from the initial, and I often um, will, not, you know, not all the time, but sometimes one just comes out as like an energy to sit on the side of a reading and kind of just imbue the reading with its, with its vibes, basically. And this is summer solstice. Light the sun, spread your ray of light and ignite the light in others. This is like a calling. <sighs> Major challenge to overcome. You, wow, you are being offered something very powerful. We, we need the runes. We need to know. <laughs> we need to know what this offer is. Oh, well, no, that one wants to stay. So, yeah, Airwise wants to remain um, on the table. Magic, rebirth, spiritual awakening. Can we, can we know what this, what is this offer? Can we know what this offer is? From Kali Ma, from the angels, this very powerful, very powerful deity. Oh, hey, I can just feel them like running through me, like this ripple of energy. Wow. So, first of all, you are being like hella guided on this journey. We've got the sun blitzing out, just coming through with that solar eclipse energy. The time is now, the time is right for you to follow this calling or this opportunity. And then we have Wunjo, which is joy, belonging and prosperity. And this is in your third house, which is the goddess. So it's a very powerful feminine energy, um, this deity, this uh, spirit guide. This is a calling from deep within to harness that Shakti energy, that divine feminine, sacred feminine energy, and kind of propel yourself forward on this challenging terrain. The mountain, while it is a challenge, it's also uh, something to achieve. You know, this is linked with choosing to grow something, to invest in something and to nurture it and, and to work towards it. So it's that energy of people choose to climb mountains because they want to feel this <laughs> like sun shining, vibrant achievement energy once they reach their goal. So it's not saying this is going to be an easy path. Um, this is a challenge. It's a challenging path uh, because this is how we how we grow, and it's important. Very powerful offering here. The can you know? It's a light. It's a flame. It's a light. It's beckoning you forwards. It's um, almost like begging you to release yourself from uh, something of the past. And, and to just go for it and follow your heart, like your heart is beating for this. Joy, prosperity and belonging in the house of communication. But it's also in the house of your skills. Your skill set, like what a kind of Kinaz energy actually with the runes. So maybe something is going to be communicated with you. Let's say it's to do with your work your house, and I read that as good fortune actually, these um, ones we don't, it's got some other um, Hellenistic I think, so I actually read that as good for, good fortune uh, when I first saw it, and this is Manaz, Society and Awareness, ooh, there's some sort of great leap forward for you and this is something that you're working on it doesn't have to be your job 
This is a passion project with the P of the Wundra. It's a passion project. Wow. Something like big. Something very big is opening up for you. And almost like this, spread your ray of light and ignite the light in others. And we've got communication and it's this passionate, joyful, very, you know, very sacred feminine energy. Like you want to set, you want to set yourself free and grow something that you're working on or that you want to work on and then bring it into the world. And that's the challenge because you may be offering something very, very unique and very um, important to you, very dear to you. It beats in your heart. But this is all about um, choosing to, to follow this dream, follow this goal, follow this path. It's all being offered to you now. I would say many, if not most of you, know what this is. You're feeling it. You're feeling it in your heart. You're feeling the desire to set yourself free. And I'm getting set yourself apart. It's something unique to you, highly, highly guided, very powerful. It's really powerful, whatever this is. It has huge potential. And I'm getting the energy of like it shakes the ground around you. And this is part of the challenge here because you're bringing something from the sacred feminine, from this quite like deep, um, sensual powerful energy into society. This is what you're working on and it's got this breakthrough energy like it is a it's a breakthrough. It brings joy, love, belonging and passion with Carly here and your beating human heart, something you're passionate about. But yeah, it sort of shakes the terrain. It shakes the terrain around you somehow because what you're offering uh, may not have been offered before in that way, but many will want to flock to you and with you as you nurture and grow this, this direction. Oh, to second house so this is you know finances and work this could be a brand new pathway uh, in the in the world of your work but it's definitely something you're offering or something you're feeling called to offer um, it's a light in the darkness it's a, it's a beacon of hope joy belonging it's extremely beautiful, but it's also extremely powerful. And when we look at that, um, you know, divine feminine energy, uh, particularly with Kali, you know, she is the creator and the destroyer. And this, I feel, is why the feminine, you know, in the last few thousand years has been suppressed, oppressed, um, you know, prevented from being fully part of society in many in many uh, cultures um, because of the sheer power when we think of Shakti energy and the Shakti Shiva Kundalini energy Shakti is the feminine and Shakti is the life force the thing that uh, makes the flowers bloom but also brings that flower's life to a close. This is death, rebirth, you know, the never ending surge of energy. So this is what you are tapping into. And this is what is awakening in you. You will not be able to fight it. It's so expansive. It's so passionate. It's so real because the feminine is in the real world. It's what gives rise to every single living thing. It is the the sunlight, you know, that's the energy, even though the sun is often masculine, but it's this powerful, powerful energy that is being offered to you now, and it 
it frees you in some way and it also frees you in terms of this like powerful surge of energy to actually plant the seed in the world and share it with others. This is what you're being called to do. Um, there's an indication that it's not necessarily going to be easy and that's because when we bring divine energies, sacred energies into particularly the western world um, where a lot of that is rejected, you know, it is that rejection of, um, you know, spiritual powerful energies, um, you know, all based on, you know, rationality, logic and all of that whole like era of western, of the western world anyway. Um, so it does shake the foundations because you're bringing something very like potent, powerful, um, no, that one does want to come out. Jera, this has so much potential. Oh yeah, these ones did. Hagalas, this is the energy. This is the lightning strike. This is the tower card in the runes. It was these three um, that wanted to come through. They were sitting there before. Othala is something coming to a close, but it's also inheritance. So what you're growing what you're beginning to move towards and grow now at the time of this eclipse is going to be so freaking abundant with Jera here and Othala. It's going from a little seedling, a little baby plant. It's so powerful. You have this very powerful divine feminine deity like surging through your veins almost and it will flourish. Othala is you know the last rune in the runic alphabet. It is it is completion but it's inheritance. It's like what you are growing, what you are moving towards, many people will benefit from. Othala is for me like the Ten of Pentacles. It's going from the Ace of Pentacles here, so the idea that you plant in the physical world and that you nurture and you grow and you walk with, interesting terminology there, but you walk with it and you allow it to flow through your veins and out into the world through you. And then it gets to the, like, boom, boom, Ace of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles, where it has flourished so much. You've earned, you know, very good money. You're earning a wonderful income from it. You're joyful in what you do, and you're joyful in the sharing of this abundance that is coming from you basically following the call. You are being called big time. This is very powerful powerful energy and Hagalas is like the rune of disruption. It is that shaky ground. It's going to shake the ground around you, what you're bringing forth. Very, very powerful. And look, we've got Jera landing in the fourth and fifth house. So this is your home, your family, your land. This is your root system. And the fifth house, creativity, sexuality, pleasure, children. You know, this is fruition and abundance on the physical. This is a powerful spiritual force that is coming through you. And the more you surrender to it, the more you allow this energy and trust this energy as it shakes up the world around you, um, the, the more free you will feel, the more passionate you will feel, and the more you will attract your tribe. This is your soul family energy. You, you will attract others. Others will flock to you and flock with you. This is a powerful surge of divine feminine energy that's coming up through you in this very Shakti life force energy. It's propelling you. <laughs> propelling you to abundance on the physical like without a doubt yeah this is a breakthrough energy that you're bringing to the world let's get some tarot cards to um, close off your reading thank you Ooh, just those oh, <laughs> the empress I mean powerful creative energy and the Divine Feminine as well. 
Like, you are about to create something from the ground up um, that just has massive, massive potential. This is in the world of your work. So this is something you are working on, something you are growing, and something that you are offering to others. Trust the beating call in your heart. Trust the light that is being shone on you and guiding you. This very powerful uh, goddess kind of um, energy. You have an extremely powerful guide leading you towards abundance on the physical through the feminine. Because again, we've got this fifth house that sensuality, pleasure, sexuality, tantra, kundalini, you know, creativity. This is creation. You have an opportunity to create abundance in your world. This is coming in hot. It's coming in now. I feel like many of you <clears throat> will be feeling this now. And you may feel um, conflicted with the energy of that's a big mountain to climb, going from, you know, this one baby plant to a plant that fruits, you know, every year and has so much abundance for myself and my loved ones and the people around me. Uh, but also this shaky feeling, like it's shaking the ground around you. Um, yeah, but it is, it's the key to your freedom, your sense of freedom, freedom to create a world of your choosing and to offer this beautiful energy to others. It's a transformative energy. Page of Wands, feeling called to follow this path. Look at this <laughs> spirit guy calling this person forwards on this path. I feel like you must be able to feel the energy of this. It's in your heart. It's lit you up. It's a light calling you forwards, like pulsing in the darkness. And this uh, Eight of Swords is the energy of, of you know, fear, of um, this shaky feeling. The Eight of Swords is feeling trapped. So it's this energy of uh, breakthrough. into a life of pure and simple abundance, wealth and abundance, King of Pentacles here. To get the King of Pentacles and the Empress, like this is confirming this energy that this pathway that is being offered to you now, like the offering is here, it's palpable, you can feel it, it's powerful, it's this freedom let your soul's garden grow wild, setting yourself free. This is the calling to set yourself free and go on this path. And yes, it's a mountain. There is a mountain to climb here. So it's not like a, you know, flick the switch and you win the lotto kind of energy. It's following this energy that has arisen within you, trusting it and letting it shake the ground around you and shake the ground within you so that you can break yourself free to follow this beautiful, fertile, fruitful idea that you have now or that is coming in like at the time of this like eclipse. It is coming in and it leads you to abundance joy, abundance, creativity, creation. This is something big. This is something powerful. You can feel the surging in your soul. And the guidance is to set yourself free to follow and trust this energy, to plant this seed. And like let it grow, like it will grow in a big way, in a powerful way, in an abundant way. This is um, what is awakening in you at this time of the solar eclipse. Thank you very much for being here for this reading. If this reading has resonated with you, please like and subscribe. I would love to have you here for another reading. Welcome pile number three. You are awakening at the time of this 
solar eclipse, this very powerful portal. And um, you chose the snake in the sun salutation card and like check that out. The mimicry there it just struck me when I was introducing your pile. The butterfly is transformation. The snake is transformation. And also what occurred before this whole reading is um, I'm enjoying casting runes to um, find the theme of a reading. And I already had the word awakening in me and then it was what came up with was Ewas, which is magic, rebirth, spiritual awakening. I just saw 5-5 five five on the timer, change. And then I was shuffling the gods and goddesses deck and Kali Ma like flew out, spiritual transformation. So like we couldn't get more clearer that you are undergoing a massive, massive spiritual transformation. And for you, I feel like this is um, in the area of Kundalini rising because we have the snake, which is, Kundalini is um, likened to a snake coiled at the base of the spine. And when this Shakti energy, because Kundalini is the meeting of Shakti and Shiva, um, when Shakti wakes up in the, in the base of the spine, she then starts traveling through you, through your chakras, through your spine, but also through your life. And the, with Kalima, you know, we have the skies here. Like she will uh, shake out <laughs> what no longer serves you, what no longer is aligned with you in this new era of your life. So prepare for change I'm getting for you. Prepare for great change. And this could be within you, but of course, as we change within, our outer world um, changes as well. There's something like deep within that is changing and it's going through this cycle. And again, with the snake, it really works, you know, as a symbol for Kundalini because it starts working through your chakras, you know, so you get like your root chakra being cleared and realigned. And then your sacral chakra, solar plexus chakra, you know, and this snake moves up in the sort of symbology of Kundalini awakening is that Shakti dances to Shiva, calling Shiva down. So the energy is rising, clearing away big time. I mean, check out the necklace of skulls, the skies here, um, or is it called a sickle? I'm not sure, but it cuts ish away. It cuts you free from what no longer serves you. And as Shakti dances, Shiva is called down through the um, portal of your crown chakra. And the meeting, many um, people think that the idea is to burst through and out your crown chakra and achieve enlightenment. And that certainly uh, does happen, um, can happen. But the true intention is for the two to dance together. For Shiva, the divine pattern, divine wisdom to come down through your crown chakra. So this is divine understanding of the pattern of reality. And for Shiva, the sheer like lust for life, life force energy, Shiva is the life force, to dance up and for them to meet in the middle, in the heart center, and then to travel through. And this is what creates a fully clear DNA channel. These are the two snakes um, that are then linked and they're like vibing, you know, then suddenly, you know, like universal wisdom is yours. But this is what like this is what is awakening in you. This is uh, Shakti is dancing up your spine, up through your chakras, calling out to Shiva to come down in this um, divine download way through your crown chakra. Now this is like palpable change. There is no Kundalini awakening without massive change because like 
look at Carly here. <laughs> like the sky is out, things get cut away, and new things grow, new passions grow, new fires grow in your life, in yourself. Um, you change, like change, change, you know, you change, like from one, being one version of yourself to another, and it is a process, it's a process of change, and personally, I prefer a gentler process of transformation, I'm not someone that has sought to have some one moment of enlightenment and, you know, uh, cut and dry. I feel like spiritual transformation is so, so intense. It is a healthy option to, like, just lean into the process, slowly but surely cutting away what no, no longer serves. Also clearing out those toxins, those toxic energies that we've just accumulated through our lives, um, clearing the channels so that when that um, divine download, like that, you know, crown chakra a opening and awakening occurs, you're ready. And this is the process of Kundalini. But each and every time she awakens, the Shakti awakens in a really big way, um, it's, like, it's like nothing else um, you have experienced. It's very physical. Kundalini awakening is extremely physical. It's felt in your physical body. And this is embodied spirituality. It's not about escaping the 3D, and this is that whole kind of thing of like, um, yeah, you're gonna go get enlightened through the crown chakra, it's all about the crown chakra and the third eye chakra, that focus on the those upper chakras, um, are not aligned with the true reality of our tree-like spirit. You know, and we think of, I can't remember what that, is it a Taurus? So this is kind of the energy, but it's going at the same time. This Taurus energy, where energy is coming down through us and coming up through us. And the clearer our channel is, the, the huger we can go in terms of expansive comprehension, this is consciousness, expanding, expanding, and it's through these um, clear channels, and the lower chakras are as important as the higher chakras. The lower chakras are our root system into Mother Earth, and deep into that Shakti energy. It's not about escaping Shakti, the Divine Feminine, to access the Divine Masculine, Shiva, it's about them dancing the dance together. <laughs> like this is what this is about. Let's see what comes up over here. I haven't had much luck of anything falling on our houses chart, but that is the way it's meant to be. That's the way it's meant to be. But for pile number three, can we have more information? Ooh, again, <laughs> I do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> but we go with what falls. Okay. So we have the South Node here. This is releasing yourself from your past version of yourself so that you can access Fehu, which is luck, wealth, abundance, and energy. Freedom from the past. Freedom from the past. The snake sheds its skin. So it releases with the sky there, it lets itself go from its past version of itself in order to transform into unknown territory. You may be having a big, big clearing of this South Node energy. That is karma from your current life, from past lives, ancestral, um, repeating patterns, this is, I can't remember what um, came up, it was quite like really strong words at the beginning of your reading, but this is like a massive clearing out of the past. So this is past stale stagnant energies that are still in you and that are still, um, you know, um, affecting your behavior, your thoughts, how you feel. 
there's this huge clearing going on this is what is awakening in you and this is like you know shakti awakening at the base of your spine she clears away she clears <laughs> like to create a clear channel for the shakti and the shiva to unite within you so trust the clearing out is is really the energy here honor the process that you're in even though the clearing out of old stagnant energies within us and ways of being can be hard going like it, you know these things have stayed with us for a reason because they hurt because um, they were coping mechanisms to do with what hurt you know it's all like a structure that has been created around certain experiences and this is what is being cleaned out trust the process and allow like surrender to the process just for 11 11 on the timer like this is a powerful portal of like immense transformation for you pile number three we have <laughs> we have the 11th the only thing that landed in a house was the 11th house in the 11th house interesting so this is your network your friendship circle your community also your aspirations here interesting and then we have cancer emotions deep feelings very intuitive mm. I'm just noticing that I completely did something weird on my notes on my note wall and that is cozying up with this 10th house interesting because the 10th house is how you are seen 12 12 on the timer support and encouragement so many angel numbers for you and of course we got 11 11 as well so you got 11 11 on the timer 11 11 here I didn't even recognize that at the time cancer in the 10th house a very deep deep sign very deep energies very much about like home and family we've got mother here this is interesting we'll see what comes up with that one we have lagoos flow fate and dreams in the 11th house you're actually what is awakening in you is a new vision for your life how you want to be seen so this is your public image so this could be for an example perhaps you have always been in middle management in your work but you want to be seen now as a yoga teacher you know it's this kind of deep this is a deep transformation in how others will see you and this awakening this kundalini awakening like it's not surprising because it um, shakes you to the bone like it shakes out everything that is no longer aligned with this new journey that you're on all this stuff from the past so that you can reach this energy of fulfillment and abundance it's not clearing out for no reason just to be uncomfortable just to be challenging it it's so it's to clear the channels to clear your pathway to being who you came here to be and this is fated here with lagoos and then Burkhan is on the bottom here and that is birth and fertility and where did I get that with the mother the child we've got this you know we've got transformation here very very powerful transformation you are undergoing this is what is awakening in you pile number three this is huge um, like you couldn't uh, well 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 nine of cups bliss wow look at you so excited about this wow you have a new vision for yourself and this is what you've always been meant to do or what you've always wanted to do or this is wish come true energy with this nine of cups but so this could be this ecstatic awakening of kundalini for sure 
for sure. But this is also this opening, this <laughs> like just flowering of this new vision for yourself with the Page of Swords. This is, you know, 1111, powerful portal of deep and lasting transformation. I'm also seeing like this Cancer symbology, like the two snakes, the two snakes. This is the Shakti and the Shiva in unison dancing together. This is a fated transformation in your life, whether that like I feel like this is definitely um, kundalini energies at play in your life, whether you recognize them that as a kundalini awakening or not. But this changes um, how people see you. Like this is transformative on a massive, massive scale. And through this change this deep and lasting change I'm getting um, in how others see you. It changes who is in your life. But I did really see this aspirations here with this page of swords. You're aspiring to your dream life, your dream self, the star, exactly. Again, this is fated. This is a fated portal of time in your life you were meant to go through this massive transformation and again the star is like the north star this is the new vision this is your new refreshed aspirations for yourself as you've been going through this clearing of this past energy all like stagnant and sticky in your a soul kind of thing, like if we're thinking like a, a channel through us, um, the clearing out, the massive clearing, many of you have already been on this journey for some time and you're like breaking out now <laughs> into this flourishing abundance where you have this vision, a refreshed and renewed vision for yourself and this is the new direction, this is the new pathway that you're going on. It's connected with your soul, with Cancer being here with your 10th house. This is shifting your career, your public image um, into alignment, and we have like a yoga pose here, with your soul. This is the massive change, and 1111, it changes everything around you with the 11th house. This is fated. This is a fated, powerful, powerful transformation. Oh, love. Oh, I thought it was the lovers two of cups. This is uni uniting again with the double 1111, the two kind of tadpole-like um, images of cancer here. I just keep thinking, have I got that one wrong? But I haven't got that one wrong. I don't know why I've put that there. But um, yeah, and the Two of Cups. So this is in unison. This 100% can be like this ecstatic, blissful, powerful, on the physical, like pleasurable awakening of um, Kundalini in you. Some of you could be meeting a a romantic partner, a sexual partner, that together this energy is awakened within you. So this is Tantra, this is um, sacred sexuality. Yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful union. But here, these two together is like your wish is coming true. It's like you're breaking free from the clearing, the deep and intensive clearing out of who you no longer are as an energy field and this, you know, fated um, wish come true energy here, both of these are wish come true, that it's like this new vision of yourself. Beautiful. Oh, these two over here. Ten of Cups, this is leading you to like this idea here. It's in between two pages. And even that, like symbolically, this is the turning over of one page and the opening of a new page that is just leading you to the most blissful happiness here. Follow this North Star. 
follow this idea. These pages can also be communication coming to you, you know, from your community. Some sort of amazing idea, you know, something you want to create, something you want to manifest here. Your guidance is to trust the process and follow this idea. I mean, <laughs> look at it. Ace of Pentacles. This is a new opportunity on the physical. This golden opportunity dropping into your hands. Look at you and you're like, this is a great idea. Should I, should I go for it or not? And 100% yes. Yes, yes, yes. You should go for this. This is fated for you. This is you realigning with your soul's purpose in the world of your work, like in the world of your career or how you're seen. This is unleashing, you know, the wild one within, your, your true wild and free soul, spirit, out into the open. Amazing. Three of Pentacles. Yeah. This is it. So beautiful. This is what is awakening at this time. You've been in a situation, probably from having been doing all of this deep, intensive cleansing and clearing that uh, Kundalini and Shakti have been up to in your energy field, and it's probably left you a bit like worn out. Because as I say, it's not easy like to clear out those old energies. They're sticky and they're stuck in there for a reason. Um, again, coping mechanisms, traumas, all of that stuff, you know, belief systems that were passed on from generation to generation with that mother-child energy. Clearing that stuff out is, is hard, long work. It takes, a lo it takes a long time. And I feel like you have been feeling depleted, like, okay, well, I've been emptying out all these cups, I've been clearing out, clearing out, and then the energy is, so what now? You know, I've done all this healing, or I'm doing all this healing, so what's next? And then in comes this golden opportunity, like, check it out, <laughs> ta-da, <laughs> this is beautiful. This is something fated. This is fated for you with the star and fate, the fate rune to come in. And it's all about this connection, <clears throat> this community. Maybe you get invited with the pages to something, you know, could be to do with the outdoors with this particular Three of Pentacles or to collaborate, to work with, to... Uh, take a different job, whatever. This is about collaboration. This is about community. And you have the 11th house over and over again. This is about your community. And the pages can be an offer. It can be communication incoming about this opportunity that one could lead you to your divine counterpart, could lead you to a best friend, could lead you to feeling aligned and in line with the people around you. So this is like a blissful workplace. This is a happy family, happy community, happy friendship circle. <clears throat> this is a wish come true for a start. This is all of what all these years, I would say, years of cleansing and clearing with this <laughs> Shakti cleansing and clearing out your um, chakras. It's all leading to this moment. And it's like very, like quite cheap. It's like, boy, do I have something beautiful and passionate and enlightening for you. This offer is coming in out of the space that you have cleared, that you have energetically cleared, boom, boom, offer, offer, communication, communication, that sets you on this new path. A path that leads you to this beautiful, like honey-filled connections with others. All of these are connections with others here. 
<sighs> this is amazing. This is what is awakening in you, this solar eclipse. It is leading you to this beautiful, happy, abundant life. It could well come as communication through your current community or an invitation to join another community or to shift your focus in your career to, we've got 10, 10 here, shift your focus in your career, that's angelic guidance, to what your soul truly wants to do. And then unlock, unlock, unlock all of these beautiful, beautiful, palpable shifts take place in your physical world. And it all stems from that uh, kundalini waking up at the base of the spine, that cleansing and clearing that you have clearly been doing for a long time. This is what has unlocked this um, awakening this beautiful, beautiful transformation in your life. Pile number three, thank you very much for being here with me for this reading. If this reading has resonated with you, please like and subscribe. I would love to have you here for another reading.